Hello, everybody. This is Alan Fine. I'm here with my favorite uh, founder and CEO of Cruise Lines. This is John Wagner will be our guest. He is the founder and CEO of American Queen Steamboat Company, Victory Cruises and the Hornblower family. And uh, we're going to talk about the current state of affairs in the travel industry. And this is Insider Travel Report. Well, first of all, thank you for being with us. Yeah, Alan, always my pleasure, and thanks for saying that. I didn't, I never knew I was your favorite founder and CEO. That's quite, uh, quite a distinction. Thank you. You're very welcome. So let's talk about the, your holdings. Where are all the ships and the crews? So you, for the whole Hornblower family? Yeah. Yeah, so I'm going to get some of them wrong because we have so many. So Alan, as uh, many of your viewer knows, you know, um, uh, my partner is Terry McRae, and he started Hornblower Cruising Events, and then I started, you know, HMS Ferries and Seaward Services, and then American Queen Steamboat Company and Victory, and a couple of years ago, we decided to combine both our companies as we both get a little bit older, and we both look for an exit strategy, so now, I mean, we're quite the powerhouse. We're the largest operator of U.S. flag vessels, um, you know, by a factor of three, uh, we have about 76 dinner cruise boats that we operate through both, you know, the uh, entertainment cruises name and Hornblower Cruises and Events. Uh, then we operate uh, several national park concessions, um, uh, Statue of Liberty, uh, Alcatraz. Uh, then we have our ferries division where we operate the ferry for EDC. We operate Mobile Bay, uh, Philadelphia. Um, Pierce County Ferry, Oklahoma City. Some people didn't even know there was a river, but we have a ferry system in Oklahoma City. And then we do our government services oh, yeah. where we operate boats for the military. And then, you know, my favorite and where I spend most of my time is in the overnight cruise division. So big okay. family of boats, a lot of mouths so, to feed. So where are the boats now? They're all, they're all docked. And are, there, are there crews on them? What's, what's it like? Yeah, so Alan, we have crews on all of our boats. So the American Queen, American Duchess, American Countess are all tied up in New Orleans. Uh, the American Empress is um, in Vancouver. Uh, and then the Victory One and Victory Two are in Savannah, Georgia. <clears throat> How are you able to manage financially to make sure that, I mean, you're, you, you've probably tried to keep as many employees as possible. Were you able to? Yeah, so Alan, I mean, it's uh, as everybody in the cruise industry, it's difficult times. And, you know, once we shut the boats down, like I say, we were the last one still operating. Uh, we had a call, you know, uh, from, you know, uh, the Admiral that basically said hey, it was a Friday night, Friday the 13th at 10 o'clock at night. And he said, John, in the morning, you're going to read that we, you know, we have an order from the president. We're going to shut all these down. We were still operating, Alan. So we uh, had to wait and get our passengers off. They allowed us to continue operating uh, till you know, the next Monday. We had passengers on both the American Duchess and the American Queen. We got those passengers off. We returned the boats to New Orleans. Uh, the American Empress, uh, we were just getting ready to load passengers. Passengers had already flown in to Vancouver. Uh, it was, uh, you know, a Saturday. We start boarding on Monday, but we include the pre-hotel night stay. We just finished all our crew training. And then the one that, that if you say, hey, John, what's been the most painful of this? The most painful is, you know, we were getting ready to christen the American Countess. And I mean, the, so Alan, I got to, you know, pardon, pardon the pun, but I'm going to blow my own horn on this one because, uh, you know, David Kelly and his whole team did just an unbelievable job. And I think, Alan, you were there. You got to go to the shipyard and see the boat cut in half. And, right. you know, but it, it is phenomenal. It's just a great piece of hardware. And so we'd already, you know, left the shipyard, did all our Coast Guard final inspections, got the boat to New Orleans, training crews. I had all the bourbon ready to be christened, uh, our big lineup of speakers, and we had to, to cancel the christening. But hopefully, and you had me cool. coming. I had you coming. I know. Yeah, that was great the worst part. That I know. The worst part. Yeah. I know. So, yeah, it, it's affected us, but it's a, it, it's a big family. But um, I think the question you ask is how were we able to get through this financially? I mean, the good news for us, Alan, is when Terry and I combined companies, uh, we had a private equity firm that came in and, you know, so they have deep pockets and, you know, that's, that, that's a great position for us to be in. And I know, 
you know, all the travel agents really, you know, that's a big question of a lot of U.S. flag operators. Um, a lot of U.S. flag operators, they say, I know you guys are thinly capitalized. I know companies have, you know, gone in and out of business. Um, do you have the financial wherewithal to get through this? And we do. And so that's, that's the great news for us, Alan. All right. Well, then, <clears throat> what, um, how are you working with the, the travel advisors now on the rebookings, the cancellations, the refunds? What are your policies? Um, have you been able to postpone trips? Yeah, so uh, the first thing we did, Alan, we, fi we, we um, uh, you know, uh, did the same as some of the other large cruise ships is we basically said, look, uh, anybody that's willing to rebook, you know, we will give you 125%, you know, value of the trip. Uh, initially, it was just for 2020. We extended that to 2021. The good news is uh, that gets to include the Ocean Victory, which I know you want to talk about, the boat going to Alaska so they can use their cruise credit and go on the Ocean Victory. And so, you know, we've seen that more than 50% of our guests are taking future cruise credits. I mean, because it's you get an extra, you know, 25% uh, for your money. And so, and those that, you know, are asking for refunds, uh, we have a 90-day refund policy. Uh, someone asked why that is. They said, you know, I, I got a, a letter. It, you know, Alan, you see me on the boats, and a, a lot of our guests have my both my personal cell phone number and my email. So I got an email from one gentleman, and he said, Mr. Wagner, I just don't think it's fair that I, I can't go on the trip. I'm canceling. I don't think it's fair that you hold on to my money for 90 days. And I said, and I forget his name, <clears throat> but I said, look, I, I agree with you, but you, you know that we had to lay off all our employees. We closed our office. Uh, there's no one in the office that can actually process this right now. And I said, what, we need all the accounting records. And uh, he wrote back, you know, I wrote him this explanation about why the 90 days ago, and Mr. Wagner, he said, thanks for taking the time to do that. He said, I don't think most people understand. I thought it was, hey, you know, just send me my check. But, but now that I think about it, your offices are closed. You know, somebody said, well, how can your offices be closed? You're still taking, you know, calls. I said, well, we, we have remote agents. Everybody's working from home. Um, but when it comes to all the accounting records and printing checks and everything else, a little bit more challenging. So uh, refund checks will start going out shortly. But Alan, we encourage everybody to, to book on a future cruise and a lot of our guests are. So what, when do you think, um, I mean, you have a published date, but do you think you're going to hit the, the date of resuming cruises? Or well, so, so Alan, I think the date that we have published um, is probably, I think what we've announced publicly is that, you know, we're closed all the way, you know, through uh, almost the end of June or to June 21st. Uh, but our schedule, and here you, you get the scoop, I mean, um, so our plan right now is to start operating the American Empress on June 21st, the American Duchess on June 29th, and the Victory One on July 5th. So that's our plan. We have our big checklist. You know, we have a red, yellow, green, and everybody has to go through their checklist and say, you know, uh, will this comply with FDA? Will this comply with CDC? Will the Coast Guard allow us to cruise? Will the federal government? Are the ports open? Do we have shore excursions? Are all our cleaning protocols in place? Do we have our new thermal imaging set up? So we go through that big checklist, and that's what we're doing now. So um, we're excited that we think we finally turned the corner, and now it's not so much talking about, you know, how we remain shut down, but how we open up and start cruising again. So that's the exciting thing for us. So that's, that now leads to the question of how, how will cruising on your ships be different once we start again? Yeah, so, Alan, I'll, I'll, I'll just say, you know, a lot of things will change. Um, I will say that it will keep changing till we start cruising um, because, you know, there's still a lot of agencies that need to approve things. But, but I think, Alan, the big things that I think will change is uh, for check-in. The nice thing about check-in for us, as you know, we include uh, um, almost all our vessels, a, a, a complimentary pre-hotel night stay. That allows us to have everybody fill out a checklist. When you check in the night before, uh, we go ahead and we give you a questionnaire, but we also take your temperature. Um, it's like, a, it's like a, you have a built-in buffer zone. We have a built-in buffer. So people don't just show up to the boat and find, oh, my God, you know, there's something might be wrong. So the fact that we have 24 hours in advance, and so I'll just use like the American Queen. We check in at the Riverside Hilton. Uh, you check in there. So we have one of our EMTs that will use an ear probe and take your temperature. Um, and so, and then we have, you know, a questionnaire that we go through. But once you're through with that, 
Um, if anybody does have a temperature of over 100 degrees, the good news for us, Alan, is we can get, still send them to a local doctor right there in New Orleans. Uh, they can go, they can see them. Uh, we're working with several different doctors there and several different medical firms. Um, and so, you know, the check-in is different. I think uh, what, when they go on board, they'll see several things that are different is number one, we're investing in thermal imaging cameras. So every time you walk on board now and swipe your card, when you swipe on, it actually takes a picture of you. It has a retina sensor and it actually, when you check in, it, it prints uh, a little picture that shows, you know, what your temperature is. And so, yeah, Joe Curtis, David Kelly did all the research on that. Um, it, it's not inexpensive, Alan, but it, we've always said, look, you know, our number one core value is safety first, and the safety of our guest is paramount to us. And as I tell everybody, you know, look, people, you know, well, there's several agencies that try and regulate us. No one can regulate us more from our passengers because if our passengers don't feel safe, they don't come on board. If they don't come on board, we're out of business. So we're doing everything. So I think the other thing, like on the Duchess, You'll see we used to have single seating, um, and now we're probably going to go to two seatings, two shows, and really restrict the dining room capacity to about half of what it was. Uh, then, again, David Kelly is our VP of Hotel Operations for the entire company. He's found uh, some new sanitizing machines uh, that uh, you walk through and you spray this everywhere and it's a fog that sanitizes everything that we'll do every day. And then you'll see the protocols of always wiping down, you know, the doorknobs, anything that people touch. Um, you know, uh, I think that you're going to see our servers, you know, probably with masks and gloves when they start initially. Will some of that change? I don't know. But we are spreading everything out. We're changing our schedule. We're looking at things for our shore excursions. Do we limit the number of passengers on buses? So we've got a whole protocol and a whole manual that we're currently submitting that manual to the Food and Drug Administration. And that's who we report to on our river boats. And on the Victory, Victory 1 and Victory 2, we report to CDC. And so we'll submit, submit our whole operations plan to CDC. But, but Alan, I do have to say that's our primary concern is the safety of our guests and our crew members. Great. So, um because you offer the American rivers and lakes, uh, as we emerge from the crisis, do you think you'll have a competitive advantage because then travelers from the U.S. don't have to go so far? Yeah, so, uh, Alan, before, um, before the COVID-19 virus really set in and, uh, you know, was on other cruise ships, uh, you know, with uh, Lou Hammond, who does all of our PR, we are doing you know, a PR firm in both New York and one in Atlanta. And I, I ran through my John, what I call the John Wagner spiel now, you know, which is our competitive advantage. Yeah, yeah, you got it. And I said, so number one, you know, our competitive advantage is we are U.S. flag. Uh, we have U.S. crew members. Uh, and we fall under Coast Guard regulations and Food and Drug Administration. So everybody knows the regulations we fall under. Uh, number two is you don't have to get on a lengthy flight to fly overseas. And I tell everybody, I always have personal stories, you know this, but Claudette and I, before the COVID-19 virus, we were invited to Tahiti uh, to look at bringing a cruise ship there. And so, but when we flew through LAX, uh, you know, uh, there was over 70% of the people that had masks on. And yet when we left Louisville, you know, you walk through the airport and there wasn't a single person that had a mask. So it was completely, it was completely different. Um, but the other thing is that makes us different is we never get out of sight of land um, and we stop at a port every day. And that way, if someone does start to feel bad, so even though we go through the checklist, even though we take their temperature, uh, if they start to feel bad, they can get off that day. They can get to a U.S. doctor, uh, a U.S. hospital. If there's transport, I know you, you know, one of the things you want to talk about was a CDC no sale. And, you know, there's some onerous provisions there that said, hey, you probably need to charter a jet to fly people home, you know, uh, because we don't want them on a public airline and you don't want them, you know, uh, burdening our hospital system. But I think our competitive advantage is that um, we get to take them right to a U.S. doctor, U.S. hospital. We can use the four-wheel vehicle to do that. And, you know, even if someone said, oh, my God, John, well, what if 20 people came down with it? You're going to overwhelm a small city like Helena, Arkansas. We said, well, guys, we wouldn't take them to Helena, Arkansas. We take them to Memphis or, you know, New Orleans, a major metropolitan area where they're set up to do that. So, and Alan, I, I know where I guess get that. And it's one of the reasons, as you know, we have a very, very, very loyal clientele. And it's one of the reasons I think they'll keep coming back. But uh, when I was in Atlanta, I even told people, look, 
the nice thing about the American Queen Steamboat Company, even if you didn't want to get on a domestic flight, you could drive from Atlanta to Memphis, do a seven day cruise from Memphis to New Orleans, take the train back from New Orleans to Memphis, uh, hop in your car and drive right back without ever even taking a domestic flight. So I think we have lots of advantages aside from our extra friendly crew that always really, really, really takes care of our guests. And we mentioned a, a little earlier the um, um, victory uh, ship and, and, of course, the one coming up to, uh, in Alaska. There's no it, – what was the date on that? We mean you're still full speed ahead on that. Yeah, so the Alaska one or the victory, victory one? No, I'm sorry. I, I was talking about Alaska. Let's talk about victory as a whole. I, that's oh, yeah. Like. Yeah, so the victory one will start, you know, July 5th, you know, and we'll do one of our nine-day trips from – uh, Toronto uh, to Chicago. Uh, again, we get to dock at Navy Pier, which is great for us and lots of publicity and everything there. Uh, but we're looking at May of 2021 to launch the Ocean Victory. Uh, the vessel is uh, doing well under construction, already in the water. And so really excited. Um, I know a lot of people have seen, you know, our um, association with uh, Cal Poly, California State T Polytechnic University at San Luis Obispo, where we're hiring marine biologists as part of our expedition team. And so very excited about that. But you're, you're usually booked over 90%, if not 100%. Uh, how are, how's the bookings looking? So the bookings, you know, for the Alaska trip, we're, we're actually just starting. The brochures went out a little bit ago, but Alan, when the, when the shutdown came, we stopped all of our marketing to preserve our capital. So we're actually just going back out in the market right now. Uh, we're having calls every week about the launch of the Ocean Victory. And so we're, we're seeing that bookings are strong. I mean, the good news for us too, Alan, you know, is that boat only carries 200 passengers. Uh, we only need 3,000 passengers for the entire season to be 100% full. And, you know, I know you do the math, 3,000 passengers, it's just the size of, you know, it's not, not even the size of a, a, a big carnival ship that they have. So we're excited about it. We're excited about what David Gearsdorf and his team have been doing on, to put all the shore excursions. Uh, Nassim from our side is helping work on the shore excursions too. You know, two of our marine ops guys, you know, Michael Bennett, you know, he started Small Planet Adventures and, um, and then Michael Doctor, you know, both that have been captains up there and Michael Bennett. Uh, was the operations manager for Alaska Dream Cruises. So we've got an awful lot of experience to make sure that uh, we always exceed our guest expectations. How do you feel about Vikings' recent announcement that they will be on the Mississippi in 22? Yeah, so Alan, uh, how, about if I, uh, how about if I tell you what a financial analyst said instead? Because, you know, everybody has their different theories about that. Some people say, oh my God, John, they're going to put some people out of business. You know, but I asked a financial analyst about that once and I said, hey, what do you think about Viking coming in the market? You know, will that increase or decrease the value of our company? He said, John, I think it's going to increase the value. I said, all right, I'm interested. Tell me why. He said, well, look, he said, you know, you've got three boats operating on the Mississippi and Ohio River. You know, ACL has three boats operating on the Mississippi and Ohio. He said, but John, when you look at, you know, what you guys need, John, if we take your statistics that you have that says you only need 42,000 people to be 100% full, he said, look, you are still one of the best kept secrets out there. And we know that you, you know, have a limited, you know, marketing budget. But he said the nice thing about, you know, Viking is that they have a very big marketing budget and they're doing TV advertisement. And so, Alan, the analogy that I use for everybody, if Claudette and I are sitting, you know, uh, on the sofa, you know, watching TV and she sees an advertisement for a car, you know, she might say, hey, honey, I think we need to go buy a car. But we don't necessarily go out and buy the car buy that car but you start to look and so I think it will create awareness on the Mississippi and Ohio River but but I think you know I still think and you know I'm prejudiced I think we have the competitive advantage I think that when people come on the Mississippi River they want the Mark Twain experience they want a big red paddle wheel they want a boat that has a real steam engine or if it doesn't a real working paddle wheel I think they want you know the antebellum south and so I think the sharp European lines now don't get me wrong will Viking do well oh my god yes they have such a big database but I think I absolutely think they will help us so I, I know it sounds crazy but excited to see them come no that's great it, it's um 
it's counterintuitive, but it makes sense. Yeah, but I've been wrong before, just so you know, but not very many times. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So now my next question is, what should travel advisors be doing right now to connect with their clients and, and, and work with you for when the uh, crisis is over? Yeah. So, Alan, that's a great question, and thanks for the leading question. I always appreciate those because I know, you know, you have an awful lot of travel agents that watch your presentation, which is great, and the video. So, uh, what we would ask most of the travel agents to start doing is, look, you know, we know that our demographic, you know, which is 60s, 70s, and, and up, uh, are going to be concerned about traveling. But I think here, you know, you get to say, hey... I know you were planning on going overseas and maybe now you may not want to go overseas, but look, I have this other great option for you right here in the U.S., you know, and, and again, it's U.S. crew is very friendly. They have great ratings. It's a real, you know, um, you know, a Mississippi River experience, a Tom Sawyer, the Huck Finn. They have great entertainment, great Southern cuisine, great shore excursions. They've won best shore excursion in the world several years in a row. So, and they get to stay right at home. And I think that's important, Alan, because I think as we open up, uh, look, we've seen all the surveys. People still want to cruise. They really do. They want to get out, especially after everybody's been cooped up. But I'm not sure they necessarily, you know, want to go overseas or travel too far. And they want to stay, you know, where a new U.S. doctor or, or they can use their health insurance. And so I think we have a great, you know, competitive advantage. So call your travel agent. Say, oh, yeah, American Queen Steamboat Company. I'm booking that. Another thing that travel advisors need to do is to get them comfortable uh, after the CDC rulings of, of, of what it's like, you know, is it safe? And certainly some of the things you discussed previously in this interview should be uh, told to the travel advisors. I hope they're watching this and they can spread the word because uh, that's part of getting the clients back in the ships. Yeah, so Ellen, it is. So you'll see a press release shortly with all the new, whatever it is, 27 things that we're going to do. Uh, we're working on our operations manual that we'll submit to the Food and Drug Administration uh, for their approval. But you'll see lots of new protocols, and we're doing everything to make both our crew members and our guests feel safe. So uh, as you and I were chatting, you know, I do uh, myself, uh, Eris, uh, Sean Beards, our CFO, and Christine, our VP of HR, every week. Uh, we do a Zoom call for all of our crew. And that's, you know, the last uh, call, we basically ask the crew, look, we plan on starting uh, the end of June, early July. What is it that you feel you need as crew members to be comfortable in coming back to work? And we had some great, you know, some great suggestions. I mean, even David right now is installing uh, hand-washing sinks everywhere. And so it's not just hey, here's an alcohol dispenser, you know, with a hand sanitizer. Uh, here's a hand washing station in addition to the hand sanitizer. Uh, here's your PPE, you know, that it might include gloves and a mask. Uh, but, but it's other things about how are you going to test to make sure that my fellow, you know, whoever I share a crew cabin with is safe. And what's a testing protocol? Uh, what happens on board if I feel, you know, sick? What do you do then? We have our, our EMT on board. On the Victory boats, we have a doctor on board. So, you know, we're doing all those things and we're getting input from our, both our, you know, our crew and our passengers about what they need to feel safe. So that's important to, for the travel advisors to pass on. Right? Yeah, absolutely. Take out your crystal ball. All right. Um, how quickly do you think business will return after the, the all clear? Yeah, so, uh, you know, Alan, that's a good question. I mean, I don't think we'll get back to the levels where we were, you know, post-COVID for, you know, one to two years, I think. Uh, and the reason I say that is, well, I, I know you're going, ooh, but, but so what, here's what happened to us and what happened to every other cruise line out there. We all know about the wave booking season. Everybody starts to book January, February, March. Um, because we were hit right in the middle that we were having a great booking season. I mean, we were about uh, almost 70% uh, sold out for all of 2020 when that happened. And so what happened now is at the end of the summer, you know, and into the fall, uh, so our November and December are still, you know, fairly weak. Uh, and we have some holes on some of the boats. So, you know, 
uh, that's why you, 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 you didn't hold me to, hey, John, uh, when you rolled out those dates, there was only dates for three boats. You know, what about the other six or other three? You know, and really there it's, Alan, we really kind of have to wait and see. We're probably going to combine some cruises. Um, but, you know, uh, during the COVID-19 crisis and stay at home, people just stopped booking. And then some of them asked for refunds. So it's going to take us a little bit. But we're really excited about 2021. I think we'll get back. Um, the good news for us, Alan, is uh, we just need a small number of guests. Like I say, I think it's 42,000. It might be up to 46,000. And when you look at, you know, uh, you know, there's – uh, that that's one weekend in Miami and Lauderdale, you know, with, uh, uh, so we don't need that many people. But I, I was sad to see the victory too. Uh, uh, but I understood the reason that you, you could consolidate the, uh, the, the trips, uh, because you, you don't need two boats currently, uh, doing that route. Yeah. So Alan, it was a sad thing for us too. Um, because you're right. We had to cancel the entire season for the victory too. Um, and the reason was, uh, you know, it's a new product for us. We had a very, very good 2019. We are booking strong for 2020. Um, but, you know, we just didn't have enough uptake. We're just like everyone else. When we come out of this, we want to make prudent financial decisions. And so instead of running two boats that were at 50% occupancy, we'd rather one, run one boat in 100% occupancy and double up on those. But uh, I still have to say, you know, that Chicago to Toronto trip, the nine-day trip, sells extremely well, uh, and our guests love it. And, and more importantly, travel agents love selling it. So, John, you got a lot of travel agents, over 100,000 uh, listening in. Any final words for them? Yeah, so uh, my final words is, look, we American Queen Steamboat Company uh, are glad that uh, you have always supported us. Uh, you know, the things you want to know from us, uh, are we financially strong enough to get through this? Absolutely. Uh, will we come out with new protocols uh, that ensure the safety of both uh, your guests uh, and our crew members? Absolutely. Uh, is it still a great product? It will be better than ever. We'll come out stronger than ever. And yeah, you know, sell, sell, sell. Now, now's the time to be selling. All right. Well, uh, before we go, I usually ask you for a funny story. And you, you mentioned you might have a, a little anecdote about what uh, COVID has caused in your home. Yeah, so I, Alan, I don't have any funny stories, but, um, you know, you got to ask me, hey, John, so I know you travel a lot. Now you've been home an awful lot. So how has that changed and what are you doing in your free time? So, uh, Alan, uh, it is. I mean, for a guy that usually travels three weeks out of the month to be home, you know, for the last uh, six or seven weeks and still know that I have no travel book for the next four weeks is different. So I've uh, been doing a lot of things. Uh, you know, you and I have talked about it when I've seen you on board, but, you know, I have a bunch of classic muscle cars and I haven't had much time to work on them. So now in the evenings and the weekends, I get to sneak over. I have a warehouse where I keep them. And I, I got to tell you, I've become an expert now in steel braided fuel lines. And, uh, really? um, but it, 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 it's fun playing with the cars. Uh, the other thing is uh, the girls gave Claudette a new puppy for, um, for Christmas. So I get to take the dog for a lot of walks. Claudette said, of anything, you know, when I go back to work, the dog is going to go through withdrawals because I'm not here. Uh, but then Claudette, she, uh, she's an expert at backgammon, and she's always tried to teach me backgammon. So now we play about two games of backgammon every night before dinner. Uh, her comment is that she is just amazed that a guy like myself can run a large company but can't count to five. You know, but um, she is giving me credit because uh, – I think uh, she's ahead 31 games to 19 now, but she says, I'm finally getting the hang of it. I'm coming on strong. So it's been great to spend a lot of time at home, a lot of time with uh, Claudette. We miss our family terribly. I miss all the crew members. I miss our guests. And uh, as I tell everybody when I sign off of my calls uh, that we do for our crew each week, I say, uh, hey, I'm going to go back with our favorite toast, which uh, – Grab a drink, you know, uh, make a friend and see you around the boat. So I can't wait to say that to all of our guests again, Alan. John, thank you for talking to us. Thanks, Alan. Always a pleasure. And I can't wait to see you around the boat. Thank you. So everybody, be healthy, safe. And this is Alan Fine for Insider Travel Report.